Metamorphism occurs in which earth layer? Well, it's only going to occur in the top layer. So the answer to this question is B, because the top layer is the lithosphere. Which forms when sandstone gets metamorphosed? Sandstone is a sedimentary rock. When it gets metamorphosed, it gets metamorphosed into a low-grade metamorphic rock called quartzite. Which characterizes metamorphic rocks? Recrystallization of new minerals. So that's the option for A, B, C, and D. So the question is, the recrystallization of new minerals comes from what? And the answer is from hot chemical fluids. Definitely not from lava or magma. So the answer is A. Um, which is the result of metamorphism? Do you get a smaller volume, a larger volume, no change in the mineral composition, and no change in texture? Well, we do get a change in texture, and we do get a change in mineral composition, and we, get to do, and we do get a change in volume, but the answer is going to be a decreased volume. So the answer is A. Which is a non-foliated, <coughs> excuse me, metamorphic rock? Um, marbles non-foliated, phyllite, schist, and slate are all foliated, so the answer is A. Moving along. At which location does regional metamorphism occur? Well, it's either in a subduction zone or deep beneath a mountain system. So the answer is clearly B. Which is a low-grade metamorphic rock? Well, gneiss is an extremely high-grade, phyllite is a medium-grade, schist is a high-grade, so slate is the low-grade metamorphic rock, so the answer is D. Um, using diagrams, distinguish between a buried lava flow and a magma intrusion. Just be sure that when you draw your buried lava flow, your X's are on the bottom only. Just be sure that when you draw your magma intrusion, X's are on the top and bottom. We're going to omit number two, uh, move on to number three. Describe the changes that will occur to sedimentary rock shale as it enters a, conver a convergent plate boundary. The biggest thing with this particular question is that you understand that in a convergent plate boundary that you actually get the process of subduction and you also get a, a continental shelf that's being pushed up or pushed together. So shale would basically uh, experience increased temperature, pressure, and hot chemical fluids, and it would be metamorphosed into a low-grade metamorphic rock called slate. Slate could get further metamorphosed and become phyllite, and then it could become schist, and then it could become gneiss. So it could go from low-grade slate to medium-grade phyllite to high-grade schist to extremely high-grade nice and um, you should look at a diagram of a convergent plate boundary uh, I drew one on the board in class that we discussed that would be really good for this the next question I'm going to modify a little bit what are the two sources of heat in a regional metamorphism environment the biggest source of heat is geothermal gradient you just gotta know that as you go down deep inside a mountain system it just gets warmer just like if you go down inside of a mine it just continuously gets warmer because of geothermal gradient um, there is no real second reason, I suppose. The second reason would, I guess, potentially be that, you know, the further you go down, the closer you are to magma chambers and things like that. So it's kind of highly connected to uh, geothermal heat as well. So typically there's just one main source of heat. Um, comment on the metamorphic agents in relation to contact metamorphism and regional metamorphism. Well, I want you to understand that you need all three in both environments. So for contact metamorphism, you're going to need heat pressure and hot chemical fluids. I'm just simply saying that heat, I think, is the most important agent because of the heat that's required to bake. Uh, for regional metamorphism, you're going to need heat pressure and hot chemical fluids, but because you're buried so far down inside of mountains, you're going to need pressure. Um, what kind of evidence needs to be gathered to suggest that a rock experienced metamorphism? Well, you're going to see a change in texture. You're going to see a change in recrystallization of brand new minerals. And you're going to see a change in volume. Typically, there will be less volume. The rock will have less volume, which will also mean an increase in uh, density. Uh, number seven, you can omit for now. So that's just, I know these are long answer questions, and I didn't give you a written answer, but at least I verbalized the answer and what you need to do in your diagrams. And so hopefully that will help you for this particular one.